Hello and welcome to Community College News. I'm Tony Bourgeois. In today's show, we take a look at an app that can help you shed pounds and how people are becoming foster parents for abandoned animals. But first, cancer will likely touch everyone in Canada at some point in their lives. The Canadian Cancer Society held their annual fundraiser to battle the disease. Kyle Dupont has more. Rocks were tossed, brooms were everywhere, and the people were yelling and sliding all over the ice. 32 teams participated in the 21st annual Curl for Cancer. Here at the Woodstock Curling Club, teams have came together for a tournament. Their goal? To sweep away cancer. Participants like Curtis Wetmore sees the event as a positive and fun way to raise money for a good cause. I raised $40. I think as a team we probably raised around 200 Yeah, I mean, hey, every little bit counts, right? Cancer fundraisers take on many different faces, from Run for the Cure to Movember. According to event chairperson Tony O'Brien, Curl for Cancer has been a strong fundraiser for 20 years. Uh, our goal is 30000 so we didn't. We came short last year. Um, it was just a tough year in the community, so we're hoping to get closer or to 30000 Close to $200 million was raised nationally last year by the Canadian Cancer Society. This year, Curl for Cancer brought in $25,000. In Woodstock, Kyle DuPont, Community College News. Parents want to be more involved in how their kids are educated. Nonpartisan organizations like NB2026 are chipping in as well. They are gathering ideas on ways to improve education and learning in New Brunswick. Mike Trusiak has more. Using words like, I really hate this class. I, was, I experienced a little bit of bullying. Dozens of people are discussing the quality of learning in the province. Parents like Anna Rowley believes kids must be challenged in order to be engaged. And he comes home and he's telling me about all these quadratic equations and stuff that I don't even understand. And that's pretty exciting when you see that. And I would love that for every child to go home at the end of the day and say, hey, you're not going to believe what I did at school today and, and be engaged. NB 2026 is putting together roundtable discussions on learning across the province. Woodstock is one of the 24 communities partaking in them. Education Minister Jody Carr joined in the discussions and appeared enthused. So I think we're going to get more people aware and more people engaged to be involved with um, not only the problem but more excitingly the solutions. Martha Bell was one of the few young people attending and wishes more people would get involved. I, because this is something that everyone needs to be involved in and it is everyone's project and everyone needs to take ownership over uh, learning in New Brunswick. And NB 2026 hopes learning everybody's project will give New Brunswickers an opportunity to express their vision and expectations for learning, turning New Brunswick into what they call the learning province. In Woodstock, Mike Trusiak, Community College News. We'll be given a five minute... Parents should be aware of an increasing number of threats their children may face on the internet. Bullying, inappropriate content, and online predators are just some of the dangers. Abdul Constantine attended an internet safety meeting. Parents filled the conference room at the Florenceville Motor Inn, eager to learn new ways they can protect their children when they use the internet. Let's text back and forth or let's email back and forth, send me pictures of you. RCMP Constable Heather Ellis facilitated the meeting. She believes the online content kids are exposed to can have a dangerous influence. Unless the parents curtail that access to that or the social networking and, and what the content that they see, they're actually allowing the media to parent their children. Constable Ellis also spoke about how easy it is for children to bully each other through text messages and social media. When we were kids growing up, when we went home after school, there was a reprieve from that bullying. But now it's, it can be 24-7. Local guidance counselor Jennifer Green is alarmed by the amount of cyberbullying she sees on a daily basis. So they're showing me messages that are going back and forth between the students. And it's disturbing to think that that's how they're relating with each other now. It's not face-to-face, -face, right? It's, it's through this texting and through Facebook messages. Statistics Canada reported at least 7 in 10 New Brunswick homes have access to the internet and that number is growing. Constable Ellis recommended that parents limit their children's internet access in order to keep them safe. In Florenceville, Bristol, Jill Constantine, Community College News. Losing weight can be difficult. 
dieting programs such as Weight Watchers are helping clients watch their diet while on the go. Jocelyn Turner has more. Losing weight clicked for me when I had everything I needed to lose weight right in my hand. I finally lost weight, a phrase every dieter wants to be able to say at the end of each week. But juggling work, kids, and house cleaning can be challenging. Weight Watchers has released a smartphone app allowing its members to track their points. So it's basically several tools that we give out in the meeting room in paper form, hard copy form, and even more electronic tools on top of that. The app also features a recipe finder and even cheat sheets to help members keep track of their daily points. The app also calculates point values for restaurant menu items. There's several restaurants included on the iPhone app. Uh, that they can go in and put in, for example, McDonald's. They can select McDonald's Big Mac and it will actually tell them the points value for that. Floyd says anyone on a busy schedule would appreciate the app's convenience. It's just that, you know, luxury of having the entire Weight Watchers program on your phone at your fingertips 24-7. Floyd has seen members lose more weight because they can access information constantly. Susan Bushby is a lifetime Weight Watchers member. Although she has not switched over to the application herself, she says she thinks the app is a great idea for Weight Watchers members. But now that I've seen it, I'm very interested. There's certain things on there that I'd be interested in, like being able to find the points for particular drinks, particular recipes, how to build a recipe, and that sort of thing. The Weight Watchers mobile app is a popular one. But a search on the App Store lists other apps with similar features. A few bites of data could help you lose weight. In Woodstock, Jocelyn Turner, Community College News. What started out as a kitchen party is quickly becoming a fundraiser that has caught the attention of women coast to coast. Over the past eight years, it has received more than half a million dollars in donations and sponsorships. Martin Poirier has more. Hundreds of women gathered at McNaughton High School for a unique charity event that supports the work of the Mental Health Association. Women in Wellness joins people together to enjoy food and wine while breaking the silence about mental illness. There's 500 women here tonight in Moncton, but there are also 300 women last week in Truro. There are women in Halifax, there'll be women in Vancouver, there's women in Peterborough, Ontario, and Niagara Falls, so there's 14 events across. Depression affects one in five Canadians, young and old. The average onset of major mental illness is at the age of 17, and it carries a double burden. Disabling symptoms and shame brought on by stigma. The event featured guest speaker Corley Smith. She is the mother of Ashley Smith, the Moncton teen who died in isolation in an Ontario cell while prison guards watched. There's a feeling amongst the women that they're in a comfortable place where they can talk to one another. If they came alone, they will never stand alone. We make sure everyone is, uh, has someone to talk to. Negative perceptions still exist about mental illness. The person afflicted and family are usually not comfortable discussing it openly. It brings more support to the person with mental illness if somebody else who has gone through what they've gone through would be willing to say, this is what I did or this was the support I got to get me through it. The event raised over $41,000. It will support a program for adults living with bipolar disorder and a course to help teenagers cope with depression. In Moncton, Martin Poirier, Community College News. Bills become part of everyone's life at some point, but a new program in New Brunswick could put money back in your pocket. Brad Perry has more details. In the middle of winter, we all need to stay warm. Whether you heat your home with wood, electricity, or by another source, it all costs money. But the provincial government wants to put cash back in your pocket. The Home Energy Assistance Program was introduced in November of 2010. It gives eligible New Brunswickers a $100 rebate. The program has been around for over a year, but many people do not realize it is running, including Hillary Stockford. I remember hearing something about it probably well over a year ago, but I haven't heard anything recently about it. I didn't know if it still existed or if it was a one-time thing for in past years. She believes the program needs more advertising so more people become aware. Even if they were able, we could let the student council know and do it through our general meetings to take it back to their class reps. I believe last year an email was sent out to all students, so even something like that was beneficial. Sarah DeWitt is a student at MBCC. She also was not aware of the program. They could probably advertise it a little bit more, like on radio or on TV. To qualify, your total family income had to be less than $28,000 in 2010. You must have been a resident of New Brunswick and have filed a tax return. 
If you have not yet signed up, you have until June 30th. You can apply by phone, by visiting a Service New Brunswick office, or by going online to gnv.ca forward slash finance. In Woodstock, Brad Perry, Community College News. When a puppy or kitten mill is shut down, animals are taken to various shelters, but they'll have a better chance at life if they are adopted, even temporarily. Jillian Trainer has more. Animal shelters tend to run at full capacity, so when a sudden influx of animals comes in from a puppy mill, like the one in St. Basil last month, animal shelters are stretched to the limit of their resources. At Dunroman, there really isn't a lot of space. Margot Albright volunteers at Dunroman Stray and Rescue. She cares for animals at the shelter, but keeps many at home. Animal fostering is where a volunteer takes a dog or a cat home. The pet's behavior is monitored and it is prepared for adoption. Albright has fostered about 70 animals in about six years. So we have a lot of foster homes out there and without people fostering we really wouldn't be able to help as many as we can. Sometimes a foster parent and pet get along so well the pet becomes a permanent part of the family. My first foster cat I brought home with me after the very first weekend I volunteered in January and I fostered her until uh, June when I made it official that she was going to be mine. Ron Cairns works at the Carleton County Animal Shelter in Debec. He says fostering is better for a pet than being in a shelter. The atmosphere uh, is better for them. They get better exercise. They don't have to be kenneled. Uh, the family gets to know them. When it comes time for them to be adopted out, they're used to being around people and not just being in a cage. The Canadian Federation of Humane Societies says 143,000 animals were admitted to shelters across Canada in 2010. Of that number, 51,000 were euthanized. The Dunroman shelter is like many others, crowded and always recruiting foster parents. About two out of three pets at Canadian shelters will either be adopted or return to the original owners. Albright and Lanto are among many people who've given pets a second chance at life. In Florenceville, Bristol, Jillian Trainer, Community College News. That was our show for today. To submit a story idea, you can email us at jschool at gmail.com. Or for more of our stories, you can go to jschoolnbcc.ca. Have a great day.